Hello everybody, so here's a more detailed video of my Berry Boy. So first of all, I found a faulty Game Boy on eBay and quickly took it to bits to see what was inside. One of the first things I thought about was how to get the original controls to work, so I started to try and hack the original PCB. Um, that didn't go too well, my soldering skills weren't up to it, it was really fiddly, and by the time I got to the third wire uh, connected to the tracer and the first one fell off, I thought, no, I've got to look for a different solution to this. So I found the Common Ground DMG control panel. This fits perfectly inside the Game Boy case and gives you points to solder on too, so it's nice and easy. I used a Teensy 3.1 to convert those button presses into a USB keyboard signal that the Raspberry Pi could understand. Next, that Raspberry Pi needs slimming down a bit, so I removed the USB ports and the Ethernet port. Uh, this was pretty challenging, and I have to admit I only succeeded on my second attempt, uh, so proceed with caution. There are plenty of videos of other people doing it that you should watch, um, and don't be upset if you break a pie. Now I had to figure out how to fit everything in the case. I tried a number of um, different layouts, but I decided to put the Raspberry Pi 2 in like this because I wanted to make a blanked out cartridge and have access to the memory card. Then the excavation began. Uh, all I can say is make sure you're in a well ventilated area. The plastic stinks. Now I had to choose the right display. Um, I originally wanted to use a Pi TFT from Adafruit, but I found it extremely difficult to get it working properly. Um, it uses the uh, Pi's expansion port rather than the HDMI or composite out, um, which has pros and cons. Um, the resolution is higher, but uh, the Pi's expansion port does bypass some of the video uh, processing capabilities, so the frame rate ended up being too low for certain games I wanted to play. So um, after a lot of head scratching, I scrapped that idea and went for a composite screen. Now this TV was originally designed for in-car use so it runs off 12 volts but if you remove the power step down chip and bridge a couple of points on the circuit board it will run off my 5 volt power supply. Speaking of power, I've got a 2500 mAh battery and I've wired that into an Adafruit PowerBoost 1000C charging board. This board charges the battery, boosts the 3.7 volt output that the battery gives up to 5 volts to power everything in the Berry Boy and automatically switches between powering everything from the micro USB jack or the battery. So everything's coming together now, but it's starting to get quite complicated fitting everything in the case, especially with all the wires that seem to be everywhere. Um, but I tried to stay logical, root things as neatly as possible, and I managed to get the case closed. So here's the finished Berry Boy. This is the micro USB jack for charging the battery inside. Um, here is a USB port for um, plugging in memory sticks, keyboards, mice, um, the cartridge is blanked out. Uh, the battery cover is still openable, I modified it slightly, um, so you've got two USB ports in there, one's got Wi-Fi in it, and you've got the amplifier and the charging uh, distribution circuit um, and the battery, and then you've got access to the memory card at the top um, via the blanked out cartridge, the Raspberry Pi is directly behind that. I managed to keep the original switch, which is what I wanted to do, but I, I put it in the wrong way around. I assumed that I'd be making a circuit to switch it on and breaking a circuit to switch it off, but the um, charging board doesn't work like that, and I didn't just want to disconnect the battery because then I wouldn't be able to charge it when it was switched off. So yeah, I'm just gonna have to live with it going the wrong way around. Um, only a couple of people have picked up on it so far. So here we go, it's booted up into RetroPie, ready to uh, waste some hours on some retro handheld games. Um, still a couple of jobs to do. I really want to get a couple more buttons on the back. I'm still figuring out the best way to fit them in um, and I need to install a volume controller because that's actually one of the most annoying things that I haven't done yet. Um, but yeah, it's playing games and it's running really well.